I really hope these cicadas aren't too bad and just completely destroying the audio. Well, as you can see, I had to do it again. <laughs> We're going to try this again. Uh, you're going to have to forgive the sounds of nature at night. However, I want to share my pickups with you guys, but I have to film when I can. So dad life and all that jazz. So. <laughs> you dad gamers out there, let me know down in the comments if you know what I'm talking about. Anyways, <laughs> welcome back to another episode of Hallowed Be Thy Game, Nighttime Edition. All right. <laughs> Anyways, I can't wait to share with you guys my pickups today. Uh, I haven't done a pickups video since I want to say May or something like that. Anyways, I got a lot to show today. I'm going to have to break this up over two episodes, but I'm going to have a much larger final pickups video to end out the year. But let me know if you like videos like this and I can show off more of my collection. A week from today, I'm going to be showing you guys my entire Atlas collection. So if this is something you like, let me know and we'll be sure to structure content around it. However, to start off today's episode, you guys know I have been diving in deep to the Shin Megami Tensei um, wheelhouse. And with SMT5 on the horizon, my hype levels are through the roof. And uh, I was very excited to be able to pick up this Nendroid of Jack Frost. Now, uh, I definitely should be showing you guys on the screen now just some better shots of them. However, this Nendroid, I love it so much. Usually I'm not a fan of the Nendroids, but with Black Frost, I think he's just kind of the perfect prototype for just kind of their style. Usually I just, I like what I see with Nendroids, but I can't ever really justify the price. However, with this Black Frost, uh, he's got a nice set of customizations to be able to equip like him holding Jack Frost in his hands. And for those of you who may not be extremely familiar with like Black Frost, um, he's actually like 15 feet tall. I mean, he's huge. Um, so him holding Jack Frost is kind of like to scale to an extent. But speaking of Jack Frost, I could not help but pick up this plushie of Jack Frost. Oh my god, I love it so much. It's too cute. But look, like, look at his, <laughs> look at his little legs. He's like a little piggy, um, Jack Frost. But I love him so much. I, I wish I could find a way to perch him on my shoulder for when I play SMT5. But uh, I'm get, I'm getting to a point in my collection where I want to prioritize the series and franchises I love, and maybe get some more non-typical things in my collections you know some plushies some figures maybe some art prints and such like that um because you know i've been moving around a lot for a couple of years you know just due to work and such like that just life commitments but all that's kind of coming to an end so i'm actually i'm actually in the process of setting up a game room and just kind of forecasting and making space which is why <laughs> i always have to film pickup videos like outside so uh, I don't want to keep family awake and stuff like that. But just so you know, in the future, there will be a studio for YouTube. There will be a game room for YouTube. But we're not quite there yet. So thank you guys so much for being patient and understanding with um, the background noise. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> the family is telling me maybe people will like the sounds of nature. Don't fall asleep on me, though, okay? All right. Okay, so going forward, I have quite a bit of just kind of odds and ends I've picked up. I do want to shout out Danik, um, my friend. He is way too good to me. Oh my gosh, he has uh, been friends with him for over a decade now. Anyways, he gifted me The Legend of Heroes on the PSP. Hopefully you'll be... Um, now, I love Trails of Cold Steel, and he knows I'm really kind of getting into that. Have you guys played The Legend of Heroes on the PSP? I'm kind of, you know, looking to get further into the series and such. I haven't played it yet, but obviously I'm really hyped for, like, Trails to Azure and uh, the Crossbell arc to be coming, hopefully to Switch sooner rather than later. I can't remember the announcements off my hand. It's been a crazy day, I'm not going to lie. Um, also, I want to share um, Tiger Chainsaw over on YouTube and Twitter. Definitely check him out. He was running a promotion on his Twitter, and I was able to uh, snag a victory. <laughs> so thank you so much, Tiger Chainsaw, for Yokai Watch on the 3DS. You guys know 
If you follow me at all on Twitter or even on the channel here recently, I absolutely love my 3DS. Obviously, I love the DS and the Vita, but the 3DS is just, I, I absolutely love it. The best SMT games are on there. I just am head over heels for it. And I know Yokai Watch has a very passionate fan base, and I'm excited to get into this and try it out. Let me know down in the comments if you're a fan of the Yokai Watch and what your thoughts are on the 3DS copy. But again, thank you so much, Tiger Chainsaw. Guys, check out his channel, sub to him, uh, follow him on Twitter, great guy. Now, let's see here. Ah, yes. So, you guys know I absolutely love the Vita. And on the channel, you know, I... My channel is always going to be what I'm currently passionate about and going crazy over. And I'm really excited to be making my way back to the Vita. Just as soon as, like, you know, this Friday, Tales of Arise is coming out. And we got Metroid Dread, SMT5, Elden Ring on the horizon. But I'm really excited over that course of time in between to be able to fit in some more Vita games. And so I went ahead and picked up Demon Gaze. Look, I've heard from fans of the dungeon crawling genre that Demon Gaze 1 is absolutely one of the best. And I went ahead and picked up Demon Gaze 1 and Demon Gaze 2. So these are just your typical dungeon crawlers. However, I hear they're very well balanced. I hear it has solid combat. And I'm excited to be jumping into those and be able to share them with you. Because, you know, the Vita has such a special place in my heart. Could it be my favorite handheld console? Oh, that's tough. That's tough. That's a future video idea. Honestly, if it wasn't for all the SMT games on the 3DS, it, it'd be a no-brainer for me. However, it would require a lot more thought. However, I say all that to say JRPGs and turn-based gaming on the Vita is Nirvana. It's the mecca all fans of turn-based and JRPGs must trek if you're able to. Now... Switching away from Vita right now, I was able to pick up a few uh, Nintendo Switch games. Actually, yeah, okay, let's go ahead and start here. You guys know I am a big fan of Sword Art Online, and I'm excited. I picked this up quite a while ago, but I wanted to go ahead and share it now. Uh, Sword Art Online Fatal Bullet for the Nintendo Switch. Now... You'll notice here, I uh, some people have mentioned to me, the uh, I, I have the European version. You know, for me, I've heard some people like to only collect like the region they're from. I'm going to be honest, as much as I love collecting and I love having physical copies, at the end of the day, I'm a gamer first and foremost, and I'm always going to go for the cheapest deal. And, you know, like in the case of Atelier Riza from the Nintendo Switch, at one time, the U.S. copy of Atelier Riza was ludicrous, well over $100. And I just, I want to play the game. I want to play it physically. So I picked that one up, European version as well. And um, for Sword Art Online, I love these games. They are a guilty pleasure. Are they the most polished games on the planet? No, but they're fun to me. And... I like the different take that Fatal Bullet takes. It's like an action shooter this time around. Uh, so I'm very excited to be hopping into Fatal Frame. Ah, uh, Fatal Bullet. Wow. I'm so sorry. I'm out here. It's a little spooky, so I have Fatal Frame on my mind. So let me know if you see a spooky ghost behind me, because uh, this is definitely not one of those Fatal Frame cameras, so I'm screwed. Anyways, so recently on the channel... I talked about uh, Devil Survivor 2 Record Breaker. I love that game. I'm cuckoo bananas for it. Funny enough, the same art director for that made the game I'm about to show you. But also, I'm actively right now playing Soul Hackers, which is essentially the heavy inspiration for Digimon Story Cyber Sleuth for the Nintendo Switch. So I, I'm absolutely having a blast with Soul Hackers on the 3DS, which is an SMT game for anybody, anybody who may not know. But I hear that uh, Digimon took some heavy inspiration from it. We'll leave it at that. But however, I hear this is a phenomenal video game, and why wouldn't it be? Soul Hackers is friggin' awesome too. And uh, so I'm heading back to Yasuda. I love Yasuda's art design. And character design, I, I think he's absolutely becoming one of my favorite 
uh, character creators in anime and video games. So it's really exciting to, as much as I love Devil Survivor 2 and Devil Survivor 1, I would love to see <laughs> uh, Devil Survivor 3 and more Yasuda coming into that. So let me know down in the comments if you played Digimon and what you thought of it as well. So I am a fan of like your Diablo S dungeon crawling, uh, dungeon crawler. Yeah. Dungeon crawler genre. And I've heard mixed opinions about dark siders Genesis. However, this sucker was dirt cheap. I've heard it is a pretty good game. It has a little bit of performance issues I hear on the switch, but ugh, I'm easy to please. And this, this sucker was dirt cheap. So this might be my next airport terminal game. To keep around on my switch so i can kind of hop in and and get some uh get some of that taken care of as i progress through it and um you know i i just hear some pretty good things it looks like the combat system is really well done and uh it looks fun so you know a nice little hack and slash to keep me busy while i'm wasting away in airports okay now for my next pickups i cannot believe i haven't had a pickups video since the since I, I played the Mav Love trilogy. So you guys are going to have to forgive the hiatus on this. However, I have ordered from Japan the Mav Love trilogy box set for the Xbox 360. So in here you have uh, both games on the 360 and also a Figma figure of Sumika from Mav Love. So uh, <laughs> Sumika, best girl. Let me know down in the comments who you ship. However, I'm very excited to have it. It's very beautiful, very well designed. I will say this, uh, this is probably one of my f favorite uh, collector's editions. It's really well done. I love the box art on it. The figure from Figma is very well made, and you should be seeing that on the screen now. But uh, let me know if you have played Muv Love, or if you've ever ordered an Xbox 360 special edition. <laughs> I, I'll be honest, uh, I, the Xbox 360 red ringed on me and my brothers four times, and I'm not exaggerating. It was actually four times. And come to find out, my brother's hardcore addiction to Halo 2, or, yeah, was it Halo 2? Had to be. Um, was part of the reason. However, uh, yeah, that's a story for a different day. So, uh, Sega Blocks, if you're watching, he, he is also a fan of mechs as well. I love Gundam, all of those. And not to give away any spoilers for Muv Love, but if you have played it, you will know there are some of the coolest mech designs in the entire genre. In those, and here we have Takemikaduchi Type 00R. Now, you'll have to forgive my pronunciation. People always let me know I mispronounce things. However, um, this is absolutely one of my favorite designs. I do have another one of these, but I'll be honest, I have left it in the basement. We'll show that off in a future pickups video. I got it around the same time. These are still really decently priced, especially if you uh, find them as they're coming out. And this is a great time to get Muv Love because you have uh, Project Mikhail. I think that's I'm saying that right. Uh, coming out, coming out on swoop, pro YouTuber. <laughs> Completely lost my train of thought. Anyways, a father's job is never, uh, never done. Ugh. Okay, so I love Max. I love the whole genre. And now this, I don't believe this is a spoiler. However, this is Maya's Mac. Uh, it's an Imperial unit. Imperial unit, and I just love the design, uh, the different guns and sword it comes with, different poses you can put these in. Um, unfortunately, again, the reason I don't have all of these out and to do them, as much as I want to share these with you guys, um, I don't have a place to put these yet. Because uh, if you are new to the channel, again, I essentially everything's put away, and as I travel, I get games out I want to play or review and take them with me. So unfortunately with the the um, collector's editions or the um, the figures and stuff, I have to store them until one day I can have my glorious game room. Now, for people who follow me on Twitter, you may have forgotten, but a couple months ago, I showed off a tweet of a decimated box from the United, uh, the United Postal Service. I always mix up which one it is. It's the one the government runs. Anyways, um, absolutely trashed it. You know, I mean, just here recently, they ripped a uh, letter that had a check in it straight down the middle. I'm not bitter, but anyways, uh, <laughs> this is the figure 
that survived the post office just absolutely thrashing it i'll have to hunt through my own twitter um, and show you guys what i'm talking about however i want to show you guys i have repurposed the packaging and everything but i was able to pick up sumika from the mob love series if you can see her right there yep i do ship sumika and uh absolutely love this it's just a beautiful art design extremely well made um i absolutely love this figure and um i was so thankful it survived i had to uh to uh do a lot of kind of tlc and stuff but a lot of people will say well why don't you just send it back and stuff like that and just get another one you know i'll be honest sometimes on ebay you find such a crazy good deal and you get it and it's destroyed and you're not going to find another deal just like that that's why it is so disheartening when things are destroyed through the postal service so that's why i'm always like please use fedex please use like a carrier pigeon i don't care but my local post office man whoo gosh they are trolling me hard anyways if you work at the post office and you are upset by what i just said i'm sorry it's I'm sure your location is phenomenal. I'm sure you're a great hard worker. However, it's just, this is like the fifth or sixth time I've had things just absolutely destroyed. But I was very thankful they didn't do too much decimating on this Sumika figure, and she made it. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, I was very happy that made it. Okay, so for this next pickup, I will admit, my friend is just recently playing the Yakuza games, Danik. And he's sending me, like, screenshots of the most insane things that happen in the Yakuza games. I love it. It's hilarious and shocking at times. However, another game that I would say is a contender for the most over-the-top JRPG I've ever played and seen is Akiba's Trip Hellbound and Debriefed. That's right. Uh, <laughs> look... It's a fun, serviceable action JRPG. It's silly. It's over the top. A little clunky. It's the right amount of jank, okay? And for you uh, gaming snobs out there who can't appreciate the glorious nature of Akiba's Trip, I don't know what to say. Anyways, is the, are these games silly and over the top? Yes, but they're absolutely for me. And I can look past the jank just because I'm too busy laughing and having a good time. I highly recommend uh, anybody check these out, but I would not recommend playing them at the work. They're definitely not R-rated or anything like that, but you're going to have a hard time explaining uh, some of the finishing moves in this game to your boss. However, I just recently talked about the Mub Love games, and I should have shared these right then. However, Viviana over on Twitter, definitely give her a follow incredible taste in games i mean you know you sometimes you meet friends and they just have like just superb excellent taste in games and i just began to notice that she liked you know the same types of games i had and she would always go on about the mob love games so definitely it, she's heavily responsible as to why i jumped in and fell in love with the mob love series um and she also proofread my script for the mob love series review with the blue shifting Definitely check that video out. We had a ton of fun making that. However, she cut me an incredible deal on two games I did not have in my collection, and I'm so excited. Now, this Friday, Tales of Arise is going to be releasing, and I'm picking it up on the PlayStation 5. So I'm trying to beat Soul Hackers as, you know, uh, before Friday because I'm really excited to be jumping into that. Now... I love Tales of Vesperia. I love it so much. However, I will admit the combat system wasn't really for me. However, the Tales of Arise demo clicked with me. I love the free roaming combat, the uh, the interplay of being able to dodge and all those uh, types of bonuses to really make it feel like an action JRPG for me. Um, and I know that Tales of Bersaria really shifted up the formula for the Tales combat um systems and i know that of all the tales games that bursaria is probably the one i'm going to love for combat the most outside of arise because i'm really hyped for arise so tales of bursaria i know the story's incredible everybody seems amazing and the cast so i'm excited to jump into that and you definitely when i get to this it'll absolutely appear on the channel 
So I'm excited to share my thoughts on that with you. Uh, she gave me a great deal on that, so thank you, Viviana. But now I have played and completed this game on the Switch. I have talked about it on the channel as one of my favorite RPGs at the current time that you can play on the Switch. But Tokyo Mirage Sessions, sharp F-E. No encore. However, so <laughs> I cannot believe I... I did not have this on the Wii U. Um, I recently, like last year, picked up a Wii U, and I've been picking up the games that I love. Now, I have played this already, but I didn't have this in my collection. So, Viviana, thank you so much again for that amazing deal you gave me. You are too good to me, and I'm excited to have this. And you know what? A lot of people give Tokyo Mirage Sessions a lot of crap, especially, you know, longtime SMT fans. I do have the benefit of coming into the series late, so I wasn't let down because I already knew, like, because, you know, when you advertise something like, ooh, it's the dark and gritty nature of SMT mixed with the dire atmosphere fire emblem, and you get a J-pop waifu simulator, yeah, you're going to be, <laughs> you're going to feel a little lied to. However, poor marketing attempts aside, the combat system from Tokyo Mirage Sessions is kind of an iteration of Strange Journey in that when you hit a weakness, your teammates chime in with an attack. It's fun. It's not my favorite iteration of the press turn battle system. However, I'm, I'm not kidding when I say any iteration of the press turn battle system is one of my favorites. So, Barry and his creepiness aside, Tokyo Mirage Sessions is a great game. And I highly recommend anyone who has a Switch, definitely check it out. So thanks again, Viviana, and um, she also sent a Prenny. I think I'm saying that right. Please forgive me, fans of uh, Disgaea, Prenny. So yeah, really cool patch, and I need to uh, I need to probably put it on my shoulder there, along with Jack Frost. Okay, so I did pick up a a, a game from Play Asia and a game from Limited Run, and uh, we're gonna start with the Play Asia game. So. We know October is coming up as I hit my mic. Uh, ooh, please, please work with me. Work with me. Okay, so I did try to, I did film earlier, so you guys are seeing like glamour shots and it's daytime. That's because uh, the cicadas were awful. I'm sure you're hearing this cricket in the background. I assure you that cic the two cicadas near my house were like jet turbine engine loud. Anyways, October's coming up, and uh, definitely want to cover some spooky, eerie games on the channel. And since, uh, which is kind of like a visual, not a visual novel, but definitely like a point-and-click adventure game. Uh, it's supposed to be eerie, very short. I'm excited to be getting into this before Halloween. I'm hoping to be able to put out a video just on some eerie games you can play on the handheld that are non-traditional. And... Uh, I've heard good things about this. Um, character designs are pretty wild. I know there was a little bit of controversy or something about around all that. And I don't know. I don't often get into controversy with stuff like that. Okay, but I'm excited to be getting to that. And East Asia Soft just did a wonderful collector's edition of this. So uh, it's always nice. I mean, East Asia Soft and, or, and uh, Limited Run just always do such an excellent job. And speaking of Limited Run... Um, look, I don't often do limited run anymore and it's not because I don't like the company. I think it's an incredible company. However, to share a little bit of my thoughts on this, not to dabble into controversy or anything like that. However, you know, they put out blasphemous a while back and I thought it would really cool of them to do that. But, you know, they definitely market it as limited run, but then we had a re-release, uh, not through Best Buy. I want to say it was on Amazon. Um, and I think you can still buy it now. So, you know, I mean, Limited Run, I think, is delving a little close to just being an outright publisher. However, in the meantime, I could not stay away from this special edition of Bloodstained Curse of the Moon 2 on the Nintendo Switch. Look, love them or hate them, Limited Run has, hands down, some of the coolest collector's editions you can get. The sucker is a friggin' NES box art. Like, sweet mother of God. How do you compete with that? And not a super slick slip cover. You know, it comes with its holographic card and everything. Um, I have actually 
I love Bloodstained Curse of the Moon 1. I think it's such an excellent game. Very well designed. Some of the best in the genre. However, I stopped myself from buying Bloodstained Curse of the Moon twice because I knew I wanted to get the physical special edition because I missed out on the special edition for Bloodstained, the first one. So I wanted to hold out and play this physical. So this is also going to be a game I'm going to be jumping to in November. I mean, no, November. What the heck? October uh, for some spooky times. So uh, let me know, have you played the Bloodstained series? I have yet to play the 3D one on the Switch. There was kind of like, it was a little bit of a hot mess, I think, when it came out on Switch. However, I'm sure that's probably been resolved and I'm wanting to play it. So let me know, have you played the Bloodstained games, and what do you think? Let me know down in the comments. And also let me know down in the comments, uh, do you get limited run? I think it's a little tough sometimes because, you know, you see a game, and you're like, ah, oh, 60, 70 bucks, I can do that. But after tax and shipping, you know, you're you're like in the 90s, at least where I live. But, um, yeah, either way, you can't really argue with the quality of their releases for special editions. Okay, so... Ease is one of the best action JRPGs out there, period. Ease 8, Ease Memories of Celseta, um, Ease Origins, they're all incredible. And yes, even the older ones, uh, even though it's a different combat system, it's still really good. However, like Ease 8's battle system is top-notch and pristine. You can see elements of it in other series that are really well done, too. Similar to like uh, Tales of Arise with the dodge mechanic. I'm not saying they got it from ease. However, it's a very solid foundation to do. So, Ease 9 Monstrum Knox on the Nintendo Switch. I did go ahead and pick up the special edition for that. So, has a really cool slip cover and just glorious box art. Um, you should be... Uh, I am going to be showing, like, what's inside. You should be seeing that, but, uh, yes. Oh, my gosh. I am I absolutely love the character designs for this. I think that they are doing it top-notch uh, of it. Now, um, I, I it does appear that most fans of E still prefer 8, a little bit over 9. However, I am seeing a lot of people I trust that like E's 9 the best, so... I'm excited to be jumping into this. However, this, these are not like uber short games. I want to say to get the true ending of Ease 8 took me about 55 hours. But that was about two and a half years. Oh, gosh, how long ago? I don't know. I think it was at least two years ago. I played it while I was in Chicago. Not that you care. Anyways, um, yeah, so I'm excited to be jumping into this. I And I did pass on the special edition for Cold Steel 4, just because I had a little bit of issues with uh, NIS Falcom shipping, but I do want to commend them that their shipping on Ease 9 was solid and pristine. It came very well packaged. I think my only beef was just that Cold Steel 3 Special Edition, when it came, it was in a, a box perfectly shaped as the shape of the cube it came in. And uh, it just had a dinged corner, and I'm OCD, and sometimes, you know, when you when you buy a special edition, you want it to not get destroyed. And, you know, with my post office, like, history, you know, I, I get a little antsy when something expensive is coming through the mail. Anyways, I do have two things I want to show you all. Yep, just two things left, and uh, I'm very excited, so let me go ahead and get those. All right, so, I, now, I love... Final Fantasy 14. I don't play MMOs anymore, but it's not because Final Fantasy 14 is bad or anything. In fact, it's good, too good. And if I was going to be playing MMOs again, it would definitely be 14. However, my time with 14 is very precious to me. I love it with all my heart. Got me through a very difficult time when we had a very bad health scare uh, with uh, someone I love very much. And, um, so I, I have a lot of strong feelings for it, and I, I saw this figure. I saw it at a really good price out of Japan, and I had to pick it up. But Xenos Von... Uh, Xenos Ye Galvis. I always call him Xenos Von Galvis. Uh, he is the main bad guy, at least at the time of Stormblood, uh, in the game. And I just absolutely love the quality of this, let me go ahead and 
pop them out for you guys. Now, I do want to say it's actually kind of a uh, benefit because I forgot to get this guy out because I got him, oh uh, gosh, a couple months ago. I don't know. Time moves so crazy anymore. However, I am a huge fan of just, I mean, the foreboding nature of Xenos. Uh, he's, he is absolutely as intimidating in the game as he is in appearance. Uh, I absolutely love just the detail and design they got on him. And he's sturdy. I mean, he's well made. I was a little nervous when he was going to be traveling, you know, so far that with his sword and his the detail on his wings. However, let me see here. Yeah. I just, gosh, I love it so much. Uh, fantastic job. I'm so excited to have this in my collection. Xenos. Uh, so cool. And and to be honest, if you're open to potentially looking at it as a co-op Final Fantasy experience, Final Fantasy Heaven's Word, I will stand by this till the day I die, is one of the best Final Fantasy experiences you can have. So don't listen to the haters that 14 isn't a true Final Fantasy or a real Final Fantasy. Final Fantasy's combat is all over the place ever since, you know, over these past few years. And that's that's okay. That's good. You know, I love 12 a whole bunches. But 14 is excellent and definitely worth a playing because I think with the free trial, you can play all the way up to at least Heaven's Word. Like, I mean, play it for free. You know, so just check it out. Excellent game. And I'm um, very excited to have him in the collection. I also have one other figure. However, I'm going to save her for a f the next pickups video just because I know this one's getting a little long, long in time. So. Now, last but certainly not least, if, if put to the question what my favorite video game of all time is, as of right now, I will say Zelda Breath of the Wild. However, Persona 5 is right there. Um, and I'm not somebody who typically jumps the gun and switches up their top 10 a whole bunch, let alone their number one slot. However... Persona 5 Royal, I played right at the beginning of the pandemic and played it during a very difficult time for my family, uh, and it just, it was the game I needed for that point in my life. It opened me up to my favorite turn-based gaming series and franchise, Persona and SMT, Megaton, that press turn battle system, and one of the absolute best things that Persona 5 Royal does incredibly right is its soundtrack. Now, Persona 5 Royal's OST is God tier. And I was able to pick up the vinyl for it, Persona 5 Royal. Um, Gentle Madman, which is the... Uh, the theme of the final dungeon, the special royal dungeon, means a lot to me. It is, uh, it, it can almost get me choked up even to this day. Is there, a, is there a song like that for you? Is there a song that can kind of hit you right in the feels to where you, um, you kind of get a little choked up? Well, Gentle Madman's that for me, and it means a lot to me. But that's just one of many. Like literally, Persona Five Royal has no bad songs. I'm sure somebody will let me know I'm wrong in the comments. However, I disagree. I just think that Persona 5, you know, love it or hate it, the music from Persona 5 is instantly recognizable, forever iconic, and absolutely reshaped, I think, the way a lot of people kind of view music. I mean, it, it introduced a new generation to jazz and how awesome that is. So, again, um, now in this soundtrack... It has such an incredible, incredible display. Now, as you can see here on the front, this is actually a vinyl behind it. So you can switch out what you want to display, whether you want that to be the Phantom Thieves with their masks on or off, different Phantom Thieves, or even their personas uh, to be on there as well. It's honestly, it, it, it's beautiful. And also, there's a calendar in there you're probably seeing on the screen to where you can see just special events throughout the day. You know, um, the Valentine's Day, Christmas, the first day of school. It's just, you can tell this was made with affection and care for fans. 
I love this. I'm so happy to have this in my collection. The Persona 5 Royal vinyls now, at least the platinum ones, last I looked, they go for well over $1,000. I mean, it, you know, so I was just very happy to catch this on uh, pre-order. Now, if you um, follow me on Twitter, anytime I see, like, pre-orders like this, I don't try to hide them from people. Like, you know, retweet them out. And there's a crew of us, shout out to Tex Captain. And also uh, my friend RPG Heels, you know, we you know we try to let each other know like if there's a series we all love and we see something really cool like this that we know might go quickly, you know, just definitely follow a at HBTG underscore official on Twitter. And uh, we you know we look out for each other. So, again, I had a lot of fun sharing these got this with you guys twice. <laughs> okay, this was <laughs> round two. Uh, but anyways... If you guys like this format and if you like these kind of longer pickups, let me know. I can always break them up or do them longer. I'm still finding my way. You know, we're coming up on a year on the channel, but I'm still learning constantly. So, again, sorry if the noises were a bit much or too soothing. Uh, but anyways, <laughs> like this video if you liked it. Subscribe and hit that notification bell for more pickups videos, reviews, discussions on turn-based and action RPGs. And until then... I'll see you all next time.